Hello, everybody. It's Dee, and we are here with another pour. Uh, we are doing today an open cup pour, and that just consists of you taking a cup, turning upside down, cutting the bottom off of the cup to make an open cup. So that's how we're gonna do our pour. I have two open cups already cut and has been used, of course. So, <laughs> excuse me. Let's go over our colors today. So our first color is a burnt sienna, which is this color right here. A cadmium red deep hue, which is this right here, but this was too bright, so I mixed in some burnt umber to darken it up. Our next color is Naples Yellow Hue, and that is this right here. We also have a Raw Sienna, which is this here. But with this, I mixed in some 24 karat gold. Um, and then we also have the burnt umber by itself. And then a black. So we are going to put these away. And then this bucket, bucket right here, which is going to be our base coat. This is a color card parch parchment, like parchment paper. So that's that. So we have our two open cups. I'm going to lay down the base coat. And we're just going to put that right in the middle, pouring it out. All of my paints are mixed with liquid text. A gloss medium and American flow draw and water to thin it out to the consistency that I wanted it. So since I just mixed these paints a few minutes ago, there are a lot of air bubbles in the paints. So you can just take your torch and have a good old time popping these bubbles because they are a lot. Air bubbles, air bubbles, air bubbles, all over the place. Um, you should try to mix your paints up a few hours before you uh, paint to lessen the amount of air bubbles in your paints. I am debating on if I'm going to leave a little bit of this parchment color in this bucket. I think I will because I will probably be pouring that in between some of the colors as I go. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is spread this color around, spread the base coat around, opening it up. So I'm just going to go in a circular motion and I see that there's something in the paint. When you see something in your paint, try to catch it immediately. So I just use some tweezers and hopefully I got whatever that was, but I don't know. I don't know if I still see it. I'm just moving the paint close to all of the edges, but not necessarily going over the edge. I don't want to go over the edges yet. So 
that's pretty good right there. Um, I'm gonna get the torch again and pop some more bubbles. As I said, when you're pouring and you try to uh, do a painting soon after mixing your colors, you will have a lot of air bubbles. All right, so now that I have spread this color out, I am going to lay down my cups. So I think I'm gonna lay the first one about right here. And I'm gonna do the other one diagonally over here. So now we have our cups down, we have our colors ready to go. So I don't like to put my yellow beside my black, so I won't be putting those when I go uh, beside each other. I would probably want, yes, that should be good. Um, so I'm just trying to order my paint the way I want to pour them in the cups. I'm going to do them the same way. We will have enough paint to uh, pour twice. And Chloe just came in to, sit, to lay under the table <laughs> while I pour. Chloe is my cat, if you did not know. All right, so I'm going to start with red. And just pour right in the center from up high allowing the color to penetrate through the parchment color. And you're going to be doing this with all of the colors, going from up high. Um, you, sometimes you might want them to layer over top of the, each color, but for what I want to do, I want them to pierce through and go all the way down. So I'm coming from up high. And my paints are fairly thin because I want some kind of transparency through the colors. So as I start to pour, the cups will move and that's okay because that is the paint pushing underneath the cup is what we want. So you might be able to start to see the colors coming underneath. I know you, uh, that the way the camera is set up is kind of far away. I just moved into my studio in my second bedroom, so I don't have. This is my first video in a very long time, so. <laughs> You have to bear with me. We will go back in with this go in with this parchment color that is our base coat. And then we will go in one more time with um, all of our colors. Waste not, want not is what I always say. So we will be using all of our hands.
jangan Now since my paints look like they want to go this way, you just very slowly start turning your cup while slowly releasing the paint underneath. We'll be doing some more of that in a little while as well. Only a couple more colors left, guys. Slowly release and turn this one as well. right through each color. parchment color, which was our base coat. torch again, popping more air bubbles. Like I said before, there are a lot because I just mix these paints. And they also will have a wonderful effect as we stretch this out. So that's good for now. We will be torching uh, one more time. So at this point, I'm just looking at the composition, seeing what's in the, uh, how this will look like stretched out. Some things I might want to change. I'm going to add a little swirl here. Pretty good for 
just gonna go, I gotta pick, I'm gonna figure out which side I want to tilt to first. Check the weight of the paint. I think I wanna come to this end first. So I'm gonna just turn the canvas around. Towards you. So I'm going to bring this down and over to this side. Ever so slowly. Because I want to get down to this corner here as closest to you. Bringing it back more so to the middle. So I like to make sure that my corners are done immediately. So I will just scrape underneath the canvas with your popsicle stick. And fill in where the paint did not go down. And it's usually those corners. I don't want to waste too much paint. I want to get those corners done now. All right, so I'm going to come down to this side. And bring that all the way over. Slow it down. back over oh, I'm having a hard time there we go alright bringing it back over and once again I will be taking my popsicle stick running under and retrieving some of the paint that are starting to drip down so I can make sure my corners are covered completely and not bare. Okay, that one is done. Two more corners to do. So put the paint down here. We are going to this corner here. Stopping it right there. Once again, scraping underneath, grabbing some of that paint that's already dripping down, and filling in this little corner. All right, so I will be using my tweezers again because I am starting to see some things in the paint could be unmixed paint. Alright, so we're going to go down to this last corner. start to open this up a little more. So this is where we take a look at 
our composition. We're looking at areas, looking up throughout the whole painting to see what areas we really like, what areas we can, you know, we don't mind losing because we do still have a lot of paint on the canvas. So I'm gonna have to uh, get some of this off. So I'm gonna, I'm figuring out how and which way I want to tilt the canvas in order to release some more of the paint further and see which directions I want to go with the composition. And as we move the canvas around, we're stretching out the areas even further. Which will open it up and you will start to see even more beautiful effects. I don't particularly like this one area over there, so I'm going to be pouring that off. We'll be coming down with this a little bit more. Yeah, stretching this out even further. Coming back towards you. more things in the paint. I want to wipe my hands off with a paper towel so I do not drip my fingers or the paint that's on my fingers onto the painting. That would not be good. So you can use light to look and see where something might be in the paint and I see a couple of paint areas something right here hopefully I got it wipe it on your paper towel see something right here oh yes definitely got that one I think there was at least one more something I saw there all right, so now we're just opening up. I want to bring this side back out. I'm gonna be turning this back around towards you. So you can see this side open back up. I think we're pretty much done, guys. That looks awesome. All right, so the next step, I'm gonna wipe my hands a little bit more, is to take your uh, popsicle stick and you want to run it underneath where all of that paint has been dripping. Now, the reason why we do this is to, we like our painting the way it is, we don't want the paint to keep drawing down from the uh, drips, so the gravity will be pulling the paint further and further down, we want to stop that, so, because we like our painting the way it is, you just take your um, popsicle stick underneath, and get all that paint that's running down. I'm gonna move my 
Mario cups. I can do this side freely. Right underneath. Just wipe it off. Making sure everything has some paint. You try to get the same colors that is on that side. You just run it right underneath. This looks really good, guys. So I will be using the popsicle stick about one or two more times um, in the next few minutes just to make sure it has stopped pulling down. I'm torching one last time. This is the last time I think I need to torch. And this is going to be the fourth painting I've done in this series. You guys did not get to see um, the first three, but I will show them to you now. Actually, I'm going to take off my gloves to make sure I don't make a mess. So here is one, and I will bring it close. As you can see, here's the second one. These are all the exact same colors. And here is the third one. and final uh, these are going to be available for purchase so let me know if you like what you see I'm going to try to get you a close up on this painting without dropping my phone in the paint 